Hello, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, today I'm going to talk about dizziness. And dizziness is quite a boring subject, I have to tell you in advance. Very boring, not very much interesting subject. Uh, however, it's also unfortunately very common. And that's why I have chosen this topic. It's unpopular, boring, but you need to know. Okay, so uh, when you look at the picture, and that will be what you can think about it. When people come to talk to you, dizziness, it could be due to anything. People will feel dizzy by looking at, uh, you know, this picture with uh, so many eyes. People will feel dizzy when in the roller coaster, or they will feel dizzy when they are on height. So, Next slide, please. Well, I'm just, I think it's a frozen now, my computer is. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to. All right, so dizziness discussion make me dizzy. Uh, this is an English usage. Dizzy me if you are confused, uh, if you don't know what, who you are doing, we always talk about dizzy. Oh, I'm pretty dizzy. And uh, it's a very vague description of the symptoms. You know, in Burmese, they will say you, gao nao te, gao mu te, gao nga nyi nyi yi pshe ni te, hai te, gao ma gao mu, gao ma ji wu, mu te, mo te, nao te, gao le te. You don't know what, if you are thinking about what the patient trying to tell you, it's quite difficult to pinpoint or specify. Um, also, when you look at the literature, the terminology usage are very interchangeable. Um, for example, they will tell you central vertigo and peripheral vertigo, and also central and peripheral etiology. So, so they are similar, but totally different. For example, central vertigo is, can be due to the migraine, but there is a no structure pathology in the brain or brainstem. However, if you are thinking about central etiology, it can be due to like a cerebellar stroke. Also, it is not specific clinical presentation, associated with the different underlying causes. So what I'm going to do is, and uh, I'm going to talk about in reverse order, and then I will try to explore how we can reach the narrow down the differential diagnosis. So there will be some overlapping, okay. So problems, and uh, this is just for your interest, at least 50% of the people over 85 years develop dizziness. So it's quite common, especially I'm sure when you are doing the general practice, a lot of elderly people will come and see you, gao nao te, gao mu te, gao mo te, gao ma ji wu. So quite common. And lifetime dizziness is between 17 and 30 percent, which I doubt it is probably more than that. And it's also common presentation for emergency department and the common cause for the neurological examination. Etiology is not just a neurology. It can be due to cardiovascular causes. It can be due to the ER causes. So you have to make a rational approach when you are approaching or dissect the dizziness system. Uh, by definition, dizziness is a not specific term and alter spatial orientation or any sensation of the discomfort in the head. Head lightedness or wooziness is called dizziness. Um, people use a dizziness term to describe vertigo, lightheadedness, and imbalance. They use a dizziness very non-specific way. And although um, people are using 
dizziness the way they understand it. So what the patient means dizziness will be different from how do you understand dizziness? So you have to ask the patient more specific question. What do you mean by dizziness? And also that symptom is not specific to any underlying pathology. So in the nutshell, what I'm trying to explain to you is it is a common disorder and the symptom is not specific and very vague. And uh, there are underlying causes are mainly three. And uh, one is a neurological cause, one is a cardiovascular cause, and one is a vestibular cause. And of course, there are other systemic causes, sorry, mainly four. And uh, if you think about it, it is easy to approach. Now, these are the systemic causes. And for people were described about they go unsteadiness, imbalance, spinning, floating, fading. I'm not going to dwell into it. And systemic causes and medication. So when the patient comes to see you, you have to think about the medication history. And also, uh, you have to think about blood pressure, hypotension, arrhythmia, sick sinus syndrome in the elderly, and there might be the, a lot of the medication which can cause post hypotension infection, of course, syphilis, viral infection, meningitis, endocrine, especially diabetic and hypothyroidism with or without autonomic neuropathy, hypoglycemia, and vasculitis and other systemic condition. For example, if you have anemia, renal disease, liver disease, and they will tell you I'm paid dizzy. So when you are doing the system review, you have to bear that a possibility in mind because most of the, the, the systemic condition I explained to you are normally a corrective um, if it is not treatable. So, um, so what that is what I'm trying to re-emphasize what I'm saying. People, this is an all dizziness person and they will tell you I'm off balance, lightheadedness and everything. And some people will tell you more than one complaint. So, so I'm just trying to make it my point. However, most of the dizziness cause are benign. A majority are benign possession of vertigo and the rest is a function and also central vestibular vertigo. So what I'm trying to do is, a reason to show in this slide is because you need to know what is a benign position of vertigo and you need to detect it. You need to know how to treat it because it is common. Now, and because of the vagueness of the dizziness and uh, and the, the the literature group four headings. Uh, so now, what I'm trying to concentrate is, I'm not going to talk about systemic causes like a, anemia or hypothyroidism or diabetes because it's it's a common etiology and pathology. You know how to deal with it, but in terms of the dizziness in general, and these are the four categories. And you need to know one is a vertigo. Vertigo is uh, when we were younger, we tried to spin ourselves in the field and you just fall down. That is a vertigo. That is a spinning sensation. This equilibria is a, as if you are on the ship or on the boat. And lightheadedness, unsteadiness is like a hyperventilation. Pre-syncope is a, like a painting attack. Now, vertigo is common, 50% of the patient. This equilibria is about 15, syncope symptom about 15. And the, if someone is talking about vertigo, uh, the spinning sensation, you have to think about benign position of vertigo, vestibular neuronitis, miniary disease, vertebral basilar insufficiency, cerebellar pathology. So again, when you look at it, the symptom is 
mathematical, but it's a diverse ideology. One patient about this equivalent, uh, it's the most likely middle ear, the cerebellar damage, and basic ganglia lesions such as Parkinson's disease. Pre-syncope is mainly cardiovascular hypoglycemia. So when the patient is talking to you, you have to give further details, history from the patient. What do you mean by dizziness? How do you feel it? Can you tell me a bit more? Can you give me example? So you have to make a more detailed story. Uh, and the Parkinson disease, this aquarium, peripheral neuropathy, because they have a loss of sensation. That's why you got this equilibrium. Orthostatic hypotension, post hypotension, got syncope attack. And the migraine as a vertigo, normally the dizziness, uh, but if you have a vestibular or particular basal migraine, you can have a spinning sensation. And uh, I'm going to repeat again and again because they are not very familiar for the general physicians, but by repeating it, you will be familiar. And don't panic, all you need to know is only this four or five condition. If you know four or five condition, in addition to systemic causes such as high blood pressure, anemia, and hypothyroidism, you know how to solve that dizziness and it's easy. Okay, now again, I am just repeating again. If the someone is talking about vertigo, patient told me you have to think about this column. If the someone is talking about this equilibrium, think about Parkinson's disease, diabetes, neuropathy, or stroke, pre symptoms, orthostatic hypotension, and autonomic neuropathy or medication. Parkinson's disease can associate with the orthostatic hypotension, autonomic neuropathy, and lightheadedness, depression, anxiety, hyperventilation, and so on and so forth. Okay, you think about it. Elderly population tends to have a more structural abnormality in the brain. So when the elderly people come to see you, although it is a common complaint, you have to make sure they haven't got any structural pathology, especially they are associated with the vascular risk factor or diabetes, etc. And children normally migraine or BPPV. So what I'm going to talk about is I'm going to talk about this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine condition. If you know these nine condition, you know how to sort it out at dizziness. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to, although I'm going to, I have a put in the literature. And um, because, and uh, obviously I don't want to dwell on many hours explaining because uh, most of the people, their concentration is only 30 minutes, including myself. So I put a more text on my slide for your reference. So Prince syncopa is a protoma symptoms and normally patient is standing up, sitting from standing or lying from sitting up and they don't occur in the supine, and uh, normally it is associated with the orthostatic hypotension arrhythmias, basobicate attack, and for example, someone, the mutation syncope, you know that, and, and cough syncope, you have to ask those stories, and you have to review the medical history, and most importantly, if the someone come to see you with syncope symptoms, cardiovascular examination is more important than neurological examination. Positional vertigo and uh, postural hypotension is sometimes can be confused because positional vertigo causes spinning sensation with the postural changes and postural syncope is normally also associated with the postural difference. But the difference between is Positional vertigo can mainly occur when you are lying down rather than standing up. Well, that is the main differentiation and features. And also there is a no 
a blood pressure changes in the PPPV. So the another is a second is the vestibular migraine. Basically patient has a history of the migraine and they have a headache and they have a photophobia, phonophobia, they don't like the light, they don't like a noise and lasting a few hours. But mind you, not everybody can get all the criteria like a migraine, okay? But someone has a unilateral or bilateral thrombi headache with associated with the nausea, it's most likely migraine. And they will explain to you sometimes just a non-step non-specific dizziness. And sometimes they will tell you, oh, my head is spinning. It's most likely a vestibular migraine. And also it is noteworthy that headache and the dizziness not always come together. They are independent. Now, benign position and vertigo. And benign position and vertigo, I show you the previous slide, it's a very common, but it's not well known among the general practice. Normally patients lying down, they feel like a spinny sensation or arising from the bed quickly. Or when they rotate it, for example, when you are lying in the bed and when they turn their head from one side to another, and especially on the affected side, they call that that batagona sensation. Also, if you are put your short shoulder on the edge of the bed, and if you are head down, or if you are doing a, your shoelace, and or you picking up something, you got a, this batagona sensation. Duration normally very quick, about one minute. If if you are if the rear batago, benign position batago, they never last over two minutes. And if the someone is screaming, oh, I'm over two minutes, it's unlikely benign position in batago. Room is spinning. Other symptoms, of course, you're going to have a nausea. And also that can be associated with the nystic mass. Uh, sorry, the next one is the, the miniary disease. And miniary disease is associated with the intermittent deafness, inter batigo deafness, okay? And patient can be associated with a nystic mass, but it's rare. But if there's someone associated with the intermittent but the progressive nature of the vertigo and deafness, think about miniary disease. And you need to refer to ENT. Uh, another one is the labyrinthitis. It's quite common and the young or an old patient is also very common in the kids. It's normally upper body infection, you got the like a otitis media, you got the labyrinthitis or vestibular uh, neuritis. They are very similar condition. Actually, I'm just splitting the hair and vestibular neuritis, you can be associated with the deafness. Labyrinthitis, normally that uh, the, the, the hearing is preserved. So I'm not going to dwell into it. You can look at the, the picture. Now, Bishua Batago, that is a new, not new, but uh, it's a fairly new compared with the other, it's 1995. I do remember when I became a neurologist, I realized that I got Bishu uh, Batago. I was in the university and uh, I am in the library, I do remember. I was looking for the books and you know, in the spine, you have to look at the all the, 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 the details of the books. And you just keep looking at one book for another. I really feel unbalanced and room was spinning. And um, so this is a sort of the visual vertigo. If you see the moving object or if you are, for example, escalator, especially when escalator is not moving because of the, it's not operating or default. And if you walk it down to the escalator, you feel really dizzy. 
that is called broken escalator syndrome. Or when you see the moving object, especially the disco light in the nightclub, and you start the feeling unbalanced or dizziness. That is a visual pedagogy. Treatment is a more and more rehabilitation, exposed gradually and trying to use to it. That is a visual. So if you ask the, the, the right question, the patient will answer you the right answer. Another one is uh, when I drive, I normally put on a handbrake at the traffic light because uh, what you feel is that when you are on the on the, the, the traffic light on the front and the other cars are coming from your sideways and you have a poor sense of the moving and which is a very scary experience. No, however, before you going to say Bishwe Bataiko, you have to check the eyes. If you have a different powers in the eyes, you can help it. Some people do have a spontaneous nystigmas, bouncing eye syndrome. You could have an imbalance, of course. So you have to exclude the eyes pathology before you're going to say the visual vertigo. So ask the patient to check with the ophthalmologist. Now, vestibular paroxysmia, if you like, it is an epilepsy of the, the eighth grade vestibular nerves. So because uh, they just very quick, less than one minute, and you feel very dizzy spell. So that is a vestibular process mia, okay? And the patient will probably tell you, I got a sudden onset, brief dizzy spells. So that is a abnormal excitatory neurons of the vestibular nerve. So it's a very similar to, if you think about it, it's analogy is a epilepsy, but it is not epilepsy, of course. Now, this is a persistent post perceptual dizziness. And this is a psych many psychological cause, and especially big people with a height phobia or anything. And they used to have it. They have a other comorbidity like anxiety and depression. Okay. So, so other causes are cerebral vascular causes, uh, especially cerebellar stroke, and you can have a brainstem attack. And uh, so in the cerebellar stroke patient can have a vertigo, nausea, vomiting, and headache. And of course, if the stroke is too bad, you can have an order and the consciousness because it is a central cause, patient may well have other associated focal neurological deficit such as dysarthria, dysphagia, nystigmas, and contralateral motor weakness and so on. So, so this is the same, I'm just going to elaborate a little bit. So when you're going to look at it and the previous slide, what I talk, I talk about pre symptoms, vestibular migraine, this may be something unfamiliar to you, benign process may possession and pedigo, something unfamiliar to you, but they are only one slide each. Meniary disease, labyrinthitis, and vestibular neuritis, I'm sure you know, vestibular vertigo is common phenomena, vestibular proxesmia is most likely unfamiliar to you, and perceptual is normally psychological, and of course, a stroke or other metastasis or MS demyelinating in the West. So if you know one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and all together systemic cause such as hypothyroidism and anemia, you need to remember only 10 causes and you are master of the dizziness. So, and again, I'm going to repeat again, it's a peripheral causes of the particle, hearing loss minutes to hour, seconds, 
Penang position in Pataiko. So that will give you the like a summarized view of what they look like. If there's someone come with a hearing loss, then it does a longer duration, most deafness, miniary disease, benign position of a dico, very short duration, and not associated with any hearing loss, and um, vestibular neuronitis, it may be days or weeks, and uh, vertigo, minutes to hours, and maybe recurrent vestibular pathy. So, the, the, the main concern for uh, medic, not NASA's really general practitioner, neurologist, general physician, or GP is uh, we also scare of the missing brain or cerebellar pathology. Am I missing something? Vestibular neuroditis, okay, it's not going to kill the patient, okay? However, we all are worried. Am I missing brain tumor? Am I missing the stroke? So that's why I put this slide. Uh, you don't normally miss the stroke because uh, when you look at it, the, the overall patient, only seven to 6% of the people got the stroke and the rest are benign condition. So it's a very unlikely you're going to miss the real structural pathology. Again, look at it, another, they look at it, about a thousand patients, a serious neurological disease is only 5%. So it's very unlikely you're going to miss it. So most likely is the rest of the cause. So however, if the patient got vascular risk factor, other concomitant neurological symptoms such as gait, every study is telling you gait. Uh, gait disturbances or dysarthria or dysphagia over 60 and abnormal poker neurological signs do the scan. Okay, so again, this is a cause of the central vertical and peripheral vertical, but mind you, when I'm saying peripheral vertical and central vertical, Migrate without structure lesion is called central vertigo. Of course, the cerebellar degeneration disease, cerebellar stroke, or brainstem lesion is also central vertigo. So please do remember. Okay, so in that case, central vertigo, I am repeating myself again, and patient may have a other problem. However, if the patient has a vestibular neuronitis, because seven and eight are the neighbors, so if you have a viral infection, they may well have a bell palsy. So bell palsy is an exception. Okay. So another again, and look at it. What sort of the pedagogical patient is talking? Acute prolonged, spontaneous. It could be the vestibular or stroke. Recurrent is unlikely a major pathology. Recurrent and uh, recurrent position in particular is the common culprit, which is a benign process position in particle. And chronic dizziness and balance is most likely either diabetic, neuropathy, Parkinson, or psychogenic. So I never worry about chronic dizziness. That is uh, most of the patient come to see you. So how to evaluate the dizziness? So bear in mind, now you all have a theoretical knowledge about that 10 condition. So your history and neurological examinations are based on that 10 condition and you can narrow down the potential differential diagnosis. And neurological examination is essential. I don't be neurophobic. If the patient got the gait disturbances, nystigmas, dysarthria, better to do the scan. And also uh, you need to do the investigation. Okay, so in the history, subjective description, apply the leading question, ask them what you mean by dizziness. Uh, okay. 
can you explain to me? Can you give me an example? Or, oh, when I am looking at the picture and the TV screen and when they are moving, for example, I do remember one of my friends, he is very poor in taking the camcorda. 20 or 30 years ago, camcorda was very, now you got the mobile phone. When we were younger, we don't have a mobile phone, we have a camcorder. So you take the camcorder for weddings or everything. So not everybody is professional. When that wedding camcorder is showing, everybody got that dizzy. So you can tell that is a visual vertigo. Okay, so onset acute chronic, I'm not going to explore further. That's why I gave you the literature and duration, frequency and symptoms I have already given to you and triggering factors, for example, position and severity. Normally very, very severe particles are peripheral. Okay, remember very severe particles are peripheral and not that severe particles are central. However, paradoxically, all those cerebellar lesions are not very severe, but they, go, they, can, they find it difficult to stand up. So there is a discrepancy between the severity of the vertigo and the patient gait problems. And nausea, vomiting, auditory symptoms, central cause does not give you the deafness, okay? I will repeat it again. Central cause does not give you the deafness. If it is a deafness, it's a vestibular cause. I did my research in the stroke patient and I've never seen the summer who got the deafness from the stroke unless it is a bilateral. Then it does as ear, hearing loss, many other disease, labyrinthitis, other neurological complaint, recent by the illness and so on. Okay. So again, and this is a summarize and the second two minutes PPBV, I have already explained to you less than one minute and vestibular migraine is normally five minutes to 72 hours. So whenever you ask the history, use that as a reference, which patient of dizziness or pathology fit in with my patient description. Okay, so standing, walking, turning, and so I'm not going to tell in it there. And these are the medication you have to ask. And for example, cardiac medication, some medic medication gives you the post hypotension, for example, beta blocker, acetyl, uh, angiotensin combined enzyme inhibitors, nitrates, and Parkinson's disease, anti-epileptic medication, urology medication, and alcohol. You know that everybody know how alcohol makes you dizzy most of the physical examination. You have to do neurological examination, okay? And uh, at, at least you have to do the cranial nerve examination and gait, and also nystigmas, with or without whole by maneuver. I will tell you what is a whole by maneuver, an ear exam, gait, and remember, cardiovascular examination is as important as a neurological examination. And of course, other systemic examination to find out a patient is a diabetic mellitus, anemia, renal or liver problems, or uh, like a hypoglycemia. So this is a nystic mass, and they normally use a magnifying glass. And, and so you can look at the patient and also patient, this is a Rumbach test. And I don't normally do only, this is an extreme. And if you ask the patient to close the eyes and put the feet together like an attention position, and if the patient spread the feet, spread the both feet, or open the eyes or imbalance, that is a rumba positive. Another way of doing it is like in this picture, open the eyes, arm cross, and ask the patient to stand on the one feet and close their eyes and patient will fall over. So this is a nystic mass and it's easy to see. And uh, you can get the fancy nystic or Google 
magnifying glasses, but uh, you can see the nystagmus perfectly with the normal examination. Now, physical examination, how about maneuver? I will show you the picture, but uh, you can get in the YouTube. The best way is even I explain to you, it's quite difficult to figure out what I would suggest is I just look into the web and the YouTube. Uh, normally, patient is sit at the edge of the bed and the examiner turns the patient head to 45 degrees, looking at his nose on the opposite eyes. Normally, the stable part is the nose. Then ask the patient to lie on the back and the neck extended and observe the nystagmus. If there is a nystagmus, it is a positive. And orthostatic blood pressure, if there is a 20 millimeter difference, that is an orthostatic blood pressure. And they also had impasse that, I will show you the picture. So that is a whole part maneuver. Remember, sit at the edge and the patient looking at your nose, 45 degree, and, and that position and observe. So, so if you found the nystagmus, it is a benign position in vertigo. And sometimes the vertigo and nystagmus does not come together. And sometimes nystagmus, you need to wait about 30 seconds or a minute to observe the nystagmus. And you can do it again. And if your patient has a really true BBBV and the patient scream, but because it's very short-lived, I told you before, less than one minute, if the patient is keep screening and screening and screening, that is a, either not BBBV or this patient is exaggerating. That is a head impulse test. I will show you that Ojima. And so, make sure a patient hasn't got a, a significant neck injury. So you normally put both of your hand at the temple in front of the ear, not on the jaw, okay? And when you turn very quickly, quickly, and, uh, and then you can see the eyes is up to the ankle of the eye, the, the pupil is, the eyeball is, and uh, because a patient can compensate it, and, but if the patient got a hit test negative, they do not, they just go along with the, the eyes head movement because they cannot fix it. And then the eyes quickly come back to your nose. And that is a positive. The positive test for the hit test is good because it's telling you it is a peripheral pathology, not a cerebellar or brainstem cause. So hit this positive, uh, unlikely patient had a stroke. Again, and there is a YouTube, and you can look at the hit test, and the, this is, I give you the, there are so many YouTube link, but these two are the best, I think, in my personality. So this is an, another hit test. You can do the fancy test, but I'm not going to dwell into it. And also look at it and observe the eyes, the tit eyes, whether it is a because of the local eye pathology or whether it is a due to the midbrain pathology. You can see that both eyes are like a squint. So I will give you algorithm after knowing patient is a dizziness of a diagonal episodic or continuous episodic, if it is a episodic it's trigger or spontaneous, if it is a trigger, it's most likely benign position of a diagonal and orthostatic. So episodic trigger by position, most likely these two conditions, BBBV or orthostatic. No, it is episodic, not triggered by any position patient. I mean, no, it can occur at any time. It just happened with hearing loss, many are disease, with a headache, most likely migraine and or psychogenic. Continuous, maybe trauma, toxins such as alcohol, medication, 
trauma, pero and spontaneous, if you do the hit test, it's a positive, vestibular neuroditis, negative, a central pathology. So if you know that, uh, it's quite easy. And this is a, again, as a more simpler dizziness, rotation, non-rotation, and if it's a non-rotation, please think of lightheadedness. It is a rotation, you have to think about cerebrovascular disease or peripheral causes. So laboratory testing, uh, most of the patient does not require laboratory testing. Of course, you have to do the glucose, you have to do liver and renal function tests, you have to do anemia, you have to do thyroid function tests, et cetera, just to rule out. Because if you are on one patient, will not feel better. And, and also they are correctic cause. And also if you think of those that are hypotension or arrhythmia or sex sinus syndrome, and do for cardiovascular examination and uh, uh, most of the time, laboratory tests are exclusion methods, and normally they come back with the normal, I suppose. Routine imaging, not always necessary, but to remember if the patient has a vascular risk factor over 60 and uh, positive focal neurological signs and head, head impulse test is negative, uh, you may want to do imaging. Okay, uh, these are the indication for imaging. So treatment. Okay, treatment. And uh, the, he said, I quite like it, this guy though. I'm not clumsy. I'm just in the, just floor hates me. David and chairs are bullies. The wall gets in the way. You know when you are drunk, that is always the way it is. So for the BPVV, and the benign position, the particle and apply maneuver. Again, apply maneuver, watch the YouTube, it's very good. You can do it or you can ask the physio to do it. And vestibular rehabilitation is, and I will leave it. It's normally the specialist physiotherapist can do vestibular rehabilitation. And many other disease, so restriction and vestibular neuroditis in acute state steroid. Migraine as Badaigo, not much you can do about it apart from the prophylaxis. Autostatic hypotension, hyperventilation syndrome, I'm not, autostatic hypotension, uh, pleurocortisone can be quite useful. I normally use for patients with a, for example, Pochare autostatic hypotension without any apparent reason, like a POT syndrome, POTS, or and Parkinson's disease, and I found it's quite useful. Or if you have a metoglopamide, proglopyrazine, and these are the other medications you can use, but I am really, really against using benzodiazepine, unless it is absolute necessary. Okay, vestibular rehabilitation exercise. They are different exercise. And this is a beyond my talk, but they are very simple. And uh, uh, this website I found is very useful and very simple and you can do it. So this is a Apply Maneuver. Uh, Apply Maneuver is basically, this is a A, B and C are the whole pipe maneuver. And the uh, apply maneuver is the opposite to the whole bite maneuver because in the BPVB, uh, just to dislodge that crystal. So if you know the semicircular canal of the ear pathology, what they are doing is trying to dislodge it. And that is a diagnostic method ABC, sitting up, turn the head 45 degree and lying down. And then ask the patient to stand up and uh, turn the head in the opposite position and uh, lie on the shoulder and then and the turn the head again in the opposite. So it's very, very simple. That is a dislodging of the crystal and that will be quite useful for the PPVV. Uh, Sit so the patient, that is a description. So, 
so I know it is confusing, um, but a, a lot of things you have to absorb, but think about it, then then condition I have explained to you and uh, make sure you look for the diabetes, hypothyroidism, anemia, uh, systemic causes, and also make sure you're not going to miss arrhythmias or sick sinus syndrome, and uh, make sure patient hasn't got uh, the, any medication, uh, especially all the medication can cause a dizziness, and you, you know if you put on every test book, but um, that particular medication, especially CNS medication or cardiovascular medication uh, as for it. And also when you are doing the neurological examination, if it is a positive neurological signs, mainly nystic mass, gait disturbances and cranial nerve palsy, and you better scan it. So, so and on the, I'm going to conclude dizziness and patico is common complaint and presenting to GB emergency medical care. Uh, analysis of the clinical feature is tricky, but if you know the causes of the condition and you start thinking about whether acute, chronic, spontaneous, or any triggering factors and duration of the illness, and that were narrowed down and at plus neurology and cardiovascular examination, okay? And, and one more thing is a patient may well have a one more dizziness. For example, patient may well have a BPVV and the patient may well have a blood pressure medication because he's taking anti-blood pressure medication and also because of the patient's diabetes, patient may well have arrhythmias. So think about one, just tiny one diagnosis does not mean you explain everything. Okay. Uh, yes, there's a no cure for it, but they are treatable. Okay. Most of the, there's a no such a thing for untreatable condition. At least you can explain to the patient. And uh, one more thing, the one I hate, my pet age is a cervical spine diagnosis. There's a no such a thing. Okay, there's a no such a thing. Um, um, uh, Bativro basal artery insufficiency can be associated with the spondylitis, of course, because you know Bativro artery goes through the, this, uh, the spine process. However, one patient got the Bativro basal insufficiency, they also not also complain the dizziness, but also they do have other neurological phenomena. So, and also if you look at the over 25 years old MRI scan, degeneration start. So if you are the doctor, I'm sure you are all over 25, you all have a spontaneous lesion because you are over 25. Not everybody got the dizziness. So. By all means, you can say, I'm not saying don't say it because sometimes patient, patient, is, patient want the answer. So just say it, whatever you want to say it, but you have to understand there is a no such a thing. And telling the patient is a different and knowing what you are telling is a, another matter. Okay, so communication, education, and also teach the patient. Okay. I think I will stop here.